Hey, so hi! I'm on the Finger Dude, and this is a Finger Dude review of RuPaul's Drag Race Week 11. And, spoiler alert, grab some Kleenex because this one's a tearjerker. I am so serious. But before we get to the tears, we have, as one of my YouTube viewers likes to call her, Feces O'Hara Dishing, the redeparted Kenya Michaels with a cold impersonation of her so-called friend. I know that Feces claims she's not prejudiced, but methinks the hater protests too much. I'm just saying it's all. So, this week's mini-challenge was a bitch fest Muppet style, and I'm not talking about a fist up your ass either. I'm so serious. The girls had to drag up a puppet to represent one of the other queens and bitch it out. Sharon Needles got Chad Michaels and did a pretty good job, although I thought her impersonation of Chad impersonating Cher was way better than her puppet makeover. Latrice Royale got Sharon, but I think she made her a little harder than she is in real life, because as Sharon said on episode one, she may look spooky, but she's really nice. And she is. Love you, Sharon. Chad got Fifi and rocked the house with that orange snaggletooth racist puppet. It was all so funny because it was all so true. I'm so serious. Of course, that left Fifi with Latrice. And the only funny thing she did with that puppet was to recreate Latrice's now famous jewelry malfunction. But when the beads stopped rolling, it was Chad Michaels who was the indisputable winner of the bitch fest. Suck on that, Fifi. That's all I'm saying. So, then it was on to the main challenge, to throw some canine realness down the runway with some real dogs. And because Chad won the mini challenge, she got to assign the dogs to the bitches, I mean queens. Sharon got the white standard poodle Callie. Latrice got the adorable Pomeranian baby face. Chad picked the Chinese crested Jahuahua villain for herself. And that left Fifi with the bloodhound hunter which she was not happy about. But it's a good thing that she's able to hide her feelings, isn't it? Not. Nah. She had a gob on her the whole rest of the day that made Hunter's drool seem dry and contained, I'm so serious and happy to say. But if the leash had been on the other foot, you know Fifi would have stuck Chad or Sharon with Hunter just to F them over. And that's what I hate about people who play dirty. They can dish it, but they can't eat it. Suck it up, Fifi. If you weren't such a bloodthirsty hater, you would have got a better dog than the bloodhound is all I'm saying. She thinks Chad scare is scared of her because she's the strongest competitor? Well, being the loudest bitch doesn't make you the strongest competitor, Fifi. It just makes you a loud bitch. Grow up! So serious. So, the girls had to create Three different looks for the runway. Dog park realness, puppy in a purse, and canine couture. And again, the unsung hero of RuPaul's Drag Race is the editor. They kept cutting up Fifi, rolling her eyes whenever the other girls were talking to Ru. I don't get it. If Fifi's such a fierce competitor, why isn't she nicer on camera so the world doesn't see her douchey side, eh? Seriously. She's coming off as the Nellie Olsen of the group, is all I'm saying. And who likes that? That poor girl used to get kicked in malls, is all I'm saying. So, it was time to hit the runway with the special judges, Winona Judd and Rose McGowan. But before the girls could strut it out, they had to do a Cats-inspired musical as dogs. Of course, Fifi Sean is the biggest bitch of the group, but I don't think any of the other girls did a bad job. They just aren't big bitches, that's all. And then it was strutting time. Latrice and Chad got red as they always do. Latrice for her sense of style and Chad for being too perfect. Ugh, I'd hate to have that problem is all I'm saying. Fifi went a little OTT with a couple of her looks that they asked me, but they were still crowd pleasers. But, much to her chagrin, it was Chad Needles who really wowed the crowd. Her dog park realness was just that. There was no pale makeup, no eye contact. She was a blonde vision of Italian Vogue loveliness. Kind of like me. 
and her heroine sheet take a puppy in a purse, won the shell visage over before she even took three steps on the runway. But it was her canine couture that rocked the casbah. Her handmade thigh-high poodle boots will most likely be the biggest thing this fall. Mark my word. I already want a pair for mine. Now, then the pooper scooper hit the fan. RuPaul asked the girls who they thought should not be in the top three. Sharon, of course, said Fifi and criticized her for a lack of morals where the family was concerned. Well, this was more than feces could take. She called Sharon out as a liar right there and then. It was something to see, let me tell you. All I can say is, I hope the judges caught a glimpse of the real phony O'Hara, and I think they must have, because when they announced this week's winner, it was Sharon Needle. Hands down, that's four wins for Sharon, the most of anyone left on the show. And of course, that put her in the top three right away. I loved it when the camera cut to Fifi, though, when they announced Sharon as the winner, because she just... She couldn't take it. She was shocked beyond belief. Fifi, unfortunately, was safe, which also put her in the top three. But it put Chad and Latrice up for elimination. Unfortunately, when the barking had stopped, it was Chad Michaels who moved on to the top three. Now, I love that Chad made it through, but here's where you're going to need your Kleenex. Latrice had to Shantae away. But before she did, she thanked Rue and the judges for not only changing her life, but for changing the art of drag forever. It was so sad. It was so gracious. It was so Latrice. She is gone, but she will never be forgotten. I know I never will. I'm so sad. So, we're finally down to the top three. And you know what that means. Next week's show is the best of. There's a promise that you'll see footage not yet aired. And I hope it's about Willem and what he did to get booted off the show. What do you think? Let me know by following me on Twitter and Facebook. Then watch next week's episode on ITV in Canada and Logo in the United States. And when you're done, come on back and see me, and we'll compare notes. Until then, I'm Wilma Fingerdo, and this was the Fingerdo Review. Mwah!